Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Anna. And we're two sisters who love handcrafting and figuring things out. Sunday, October 22nd, and this is episode 36, and we're so happy you're joining us. Hello. <laughs> okay, give us a weather report. A really interesting day. We had some a cool morning, mm -hmm. big clouds, a few raindrops. Someone told me there's a double rainbow this morning. That I didn't, there I didn't there was. Actually, John got a picture of it when he was out okay. walking Coco. Yeah. And now it's sort of like hot and muggy, and there's mm -hmm. big gray clouds again hovering over the hills. Yeah. So everyone's excited because it's been a long time since we've had raindrops. And it's starting to be a fall, and you're getting rain. I know one of my sons, he's like texting the group, and he's like, what's going on here? It's raining, and the sky's blue. So <laughs> we're kind of in that mode right it now. It might rain while we film. I think it which might. Which would be very exciting. We'll, we'll pause and let you know if that, that, that happens, because it's very exciting for us. All right, let's see. We've got a lot of stuff in today's episode. We're gonna talk about what we're wearing. We have some FFOs, we have lots of whips, we have plans. Anna's gonna been really curious about sewing two pieces of linen together, so she's gonna share her findings with that. We've got a few shared supplies, I think mostly charts. Yes, but for who, me. Who doesn't love charts? Me too. We're, now we have a library of charts. I know, I know, I know. And then we'll end with our thumbs up. All right. So let's do a little chit chat before we start. Oh, oh anything big from comments? We were thinking time. about finishing in our last video and some people told us sort of what their finishing habits are. You mean Pl to fully finish? To, sorry, yes, sorry, mm -hmm. to fully finish. Plenty of people have a drawer and under the bed box that have a stack of finished but not fully finished mm -hmm. because Carolyn showed 18 of her finished but not fully finished last mm -hmm. video. Um, others said as soon as they finish stitching, they fully finish. Yeah. Like sometimes even the next day, take it to the framer yeah. or fully finish themselves. And really, I find inspiring. Yeah. I, 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 that's appealing to me. Yeah, they were sort of saying they think of it as just part of the process. It's not like, oh, I'm finished. And then that they see that as an arc. And I'm actually gonna, that was really inspiring to me too. I'm gonna try that as I'm finishing things moving forward. Other people said maybe one day a month. They, it's their finishing day, mm -hmm. or one day a week, or someone suggested, or I think she actually does, fully finishing February. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> kind of alliteration. Yeah. So I, I will, I think, let's play I, around with it. I think somebody I else said that she tends to like finish right away things that are gifts, but things, if she doesn't know where it's going to be, like in her home, you know, then she'll maybe save it. Until I missed she's that one that. on our, yes, mm -hmm. yes. A couple people said that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I lo loved hearing all those ideas because, I, and I also like that, like going back, like I think I'm going to try to finish as, fully finish as I finish, just to experiment with that. But for the ones, my big pile of, well, it's now 16, no longer 18, we'll see in a minute. Congrats. Uh, I think I'm going to kind of look through this and as I have things of being like, oh, I know what I want to do with that. Either I want to give it to somebody or I have a specific place in my house. I'm going to kind of prioritize it and do it that way. Okay. So if I try to finish right when I, fully finish right when I finish, I'm going to have to finish on Friday night. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> but I also just want to say, I feel like this is another example of like the big variety pack in yeah. any community. We each have our different ways and it's really fun to just hear everybody's different ways. I, one's not good, one's not bad. Right. It's just fun to hear the, the different. Just when we're teaching, we're always like, we want to hear all the different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And and it's fun to also like experiment. Like if I've been doing it one way, I'm like, eh, I haven't really been working for me. Like try somebody else's strategy and see if that works for you. It's a good little um, check-in. What else was I going to say about finishing? Oh, 
You may not have seen this comment yet. It came in. Mm. Um, so Anna is our comment replier, but I also read all the comments too. She said something like, for the finish for you, the bird, uh, songbird sampler. She said, just give it to Anna and let her finish and bill you. <laughs> like, that's, I love that one. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm going to say one more thing too. Sure. Things keep popping in our head about yeah. finishing. Mm -hmm. I also had this strong urge of like, I'm just going to send one of my pieces off and get it framed yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So I think I need to try that. I think I think I, I might I, do the same thing. I too. love our spirit of learning how to do a lot of it ourselves because I do find it interesting. Mm -hmm. But I think I, I want that experience of just sending something off and having it come back. Yeah, down I, I every once in a while. I was, once a year. Yeah, because I was thinking the ex for me like I think the expense in general is not in my budget for all my pieces, but I think I should be able to do like a few a year, like mm -hmm. a couple of years, and so and also you're right, do it. And then also you'll see like, did that feel like it was worth it? Uh, exactly, because, yes, exactly. The other thing I'm gonna try is lacing something myself and just then going to Michael's, for example, and just looking at their, even, and so even if they have to custom make the frame, like I'm gonna do the lacing and the stretching and then have them do the frame to fit. I know I can order frames online too, but I was thinking I might wanna go and like, just look at what their frames are like. Right. And we have one so close to us. Right. I'm feeling a little breeze, like an up breeze before the rain. It's gonna it's gonna definitely <gasps> and rain. The patio umbrella is blowing. Yeah, we got a little cross breeze. All right. Uh we also just wanted to add a little just quick segment, Kathy Barrick fan club. So just a couple of things that have come up for any of you fan club members out there. First of all, have you all seen she released two winter or and or Christmas releases in the last maybe the last week? Or so. Didn't she have three releases, or was one of them not? I just thought two, unless I'm like talking. missing one. She may have also had like an exclusive for worship teaching. All right, okay. So one of them I already have purchased, and this is called North Pole. I'm getting that too. Yeah. And then the other one is a winter sampler, which I highly recommend. Uh, Hillside Rookery, of course, is my and our go-to places for getting our Kathy Barrick things, and Olivia already has a floss pack for a winter sampler. Olivia B. Olivia B. Olivia B. Olivia B. Yeah, at Hillside Rookery. That um, is her pre-order. And then I'm like, oh, I really want this one if she does it. And um, rumor is that she's gonna have one, but I hadn't realized till I got the pattern. It does have so, for some reason, looking at the chart, I'm like, oh, what, maybe four or five colors, but look at that list. So I can understand, I'll see if Livia, I think she's going to try to put one together. It's going to be a combination of full skeins and then some partial skeins. This, you know how MBI does, moss green, light, moss right. green, medium, moss yeah. green, dark, moss, moss and, green. Dark. And you can see for the trees, it's going to be there. You know what I had in my head? Yeah. It was, um, she had some Christmas uh, stickers. Stickers, right. Right, so two charts and some stickers. So as soon as Olivia gets the floss pack for this, as Laura Duet would say, I'm going to get that stack. Right. <laughs> and I've been waiting to get the pattern for and the floss at the same time. Uh huh. But now I'm like, should I get the pattern? I just I just had to get the pattern for that. Because just in case she may find like it's it's not feasible to do the floss plaques. I'm sure she has to experiment and just see what does that feel like with that many flosses. Um I'm just looking at this one tree of all the greens in that one tree. I know. Did you already say that? Maybe. Uh -huh. Who knows? Okay, so if you haven't checked out our two charts, and I'd be curious, is, is anybody, I've heard a little rumblings about this, is anybody else gonna stitch them? I know I'm gonna stitch that one sooner than later because it might be fun um, to kind of stitch them together or have a start date where we're all gonna start them at the oh, same yeah. time. I mean, I'm already right, envisioning like, <laughs> holiday decor, hanging in the living room, <laughs> stitching my Santa. <laughs> Yeah, oh my goodness. Okay. Um, a couple other things. I just wanted to highlight a couple of people as I was just looking at some Kathy Barrick stuff. Um, White Winter Moth, Pam, and I'll put her Instagram handle right there. She has a beautiful finish. If you go back, she posted on September 1st. So go back. It's worth going and look at it. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And then Kelly, and I'll put her Instagram handle right here. She's working on crow number five. And uh, I thought it was cute. She said she thinks the crow is sitting on top of a merry-go-round from her childhood. Ooh, so she said it gave her some really special memories. Right. And her yeah. post was October 11th on Instagram. So if you go back in both of those uh, beautiful Stitcher's feeds, you'll see that. So hashtag Kathy Barrick Fan Club. Big time. Big time. I'm still a member. <laughs> I'm still a member too. <laughs> 
All right, so I had my flu shot and my COVID shot last weekend. I just feel like done mm -hmm. and uh, through that. And then last week I was teaching sewing instead of math at my school. And I started the students making this little felt dog, which is really fun to watch these flat pattern pieces become 3D. And I, I forgot to bring it home, but I made a little dog too. And we decided it's gonna live on the math cart. Uh, which I, I roll around because I teach in more than one classroom. And if you're having a special day, like your birthday, the math dog can sit with you while you do your work. Yeah. Or if you come in from PE with an ice pack, the math dog might really help I you love feel it. better. Yeah. We were thinking about that with a scarf or something. This is a, some episodes back of... <laughs> like having a community scarf that the kids knit at school and then it's like, can I wear the scarf today? I've had this idea with the guinea pig. You have a guinea pig in the classroom yeah. and then if you want, you can hold the guinea pig for various reasons. You but, do have a special love for guinea pigs. You know what? We need to ask Kathy Barrick, does she have an affinity for guinea pigs? Because wouldn't one of her charts with a guinea pig, like, mm -hmm. are you designers out there, like in place of a rabbit, doing something with a guinea pig? I Maybe think it would like be a multi tone one might go in guinea pig with like brown and black I, I and think white. it'd be very popular. Anna had a lot of guinea pigs growing up. That was really your pet mm -hmm. choice. <laughs> All right. And just And what about you, Karen? Okay, just you last to? couple last week we had parent teacher conferences and at my school every you conference with every family for like ten to fifteen minutes. So it's in fact the students are not at school for three days and it's three days of sitting and talking, which teachers at least I don't do a lot of that at school um so it's really great but it's so tiring because you're doing that all day and then at night you're prepping kind of for the next one so i'll show you a piece one night i tried to stitch afterwards and i made like 10 mistakes making a small motif oh, and i'm like it was so interesting i could not get at the pin stitch started i had wow. to try like six times and finally i'm like brain tired brain tired in fact at the end of those wow. days i'm so brain tired i don't want to do anything like not even watch tv do anything but it's also at the same time, you know, the parents are so grateful. You, you really, it's a great time to think about each of the kids. It's just hard. We're doing that for the first time this year and in a couple of weeks. So I will, I will report back to yeah. everyone. Yeah. Okay. Our toast. I wanted to toast to nightly stitching. In our last video, we were, we were trying to estimate how many strands of floss we use on a typical night of stitching. And we were guessing... About I was 10, guessing five, I was five, five, five to ten. ten, and I I overestimated actually. So oh, I, I I kept a little tally the last nice. couple of weeks. Okay, and last the week before, some nights I only did two. I would say like my average was four strands, and then I had a sixteen strand down on one of my weekend Whoa. days. And then last week because it was like I said I was teaching sewing instead of math, it was a little bit more relaxed week at school. Really interesting in my my strands were okay. more like eight or nine strands okay. a night so again i it i feel less tired i felt less tired from school last week yeah and you did, did more, more stitching, stitching. I, I i was all gung-ho and i did not collect my data but i i want to i ended up actually having several nights over the last couple of weeks that i didn't stitch at all it yeah kind of slowed me down a little bit which also factors in of why i want to toast tonight nightly stitching mm -hmm. because that when i don't stitch i, I really miss it i me almost too. feel sad me too. Which is a sign to me of just how, all the good things yeah. it does for me, how much joy it brings. Or like when I have a busy day, I'm, I know I'm looking forward to, I'm like, whatever I'm doing, I'm stopping at like 7.30 or 8 and I'm going to stitch for at least, you know, an hour, an hour and a half. If, if I can, if my brain lets me. And I have to admit, I usually knit on vacation more than stitch, but I miss my cross stitching when I've been on vacation mm -hmm. the last couple of years. Okay, so, nightly, nightly stitching. stitching. Mm -hmm. We have some tea going. Anna's got a lemon ginger. And I have, I don't know if anybody has ever had the Paris black tea. It's like my afternoon treat. So good. Can you smell that? It has like vanilla. Oh, it smells, it's really good. Mm. Cast it smells like that. mellow. Yeah. All right, Anna, what are you I, wearing? I'm wearing the PZ cardigan in which I knit in Rowan cotton glacé. Glacé. Mm -hmm. And I almost never wear this. And I'm realizing our what are you wearing segment is helping me see which of my handmade clothes mm -hmm. I wear a lot and which I wear almost never. Do you know why you don't wear that one or have you thought? Well, I think I like it most with sleeveless dresses. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know why I don't wear it more in summer evening with sleeveless mm -hmm. dresses. Mm -hmm. Like I have it on with a tee today and I'm like, I'm not, I don't know if this really <laughs> works that well. So I think that could be one reason why yeah. I'm not wearing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. 
I'm I, not really sure. I'm almost ready to give it away. Mm -hmm. I know. So we'll see on the catwalk how it is. Yeah. Carolyn? I'm, yeah. So I'm just wearing something I wore a couple episodes ago. It's it's the Ranunculus sweater, which is a very popular sweater. A lot of people have knit. It's very oversized. It's knit with a single strand of fingering weight yarn with mohair. And the mohair, it's very open, but the mohair is enough of those fibers coming out that it sort of fills in the gaps and it actually insulates. It's very warm and cozy. I like this color with your complexion and your the color of your hair. Yeah, I love this color. It's it's funny when my, this is my gray hair. I used to have like a reddier It's really different. Red. Red. We, yeah. should, should, we should find a picture. We, we should. People because it's, it's surprisingly different. And that we, when I had like hair color, I would wear like the autumn palette. Mm. Like that was like my go-to palette. And now that it's more like a white I wear more, I like this, I like turquoise, those colors. And I don't know if you can see, I have this like dark, like stripe in my hair too, that's just like part of it. It's like, that wasn't the color of my hair. I don't even know where that came from. Right. Like, right. whatever. We're just going with, mm -hmm. going with what we got. Going with it. All right. Okay, fully finished. Oh, let's, fully oh, finished. catwalk. finishing a little bit. First of all, my Whipco poll number 14 for October was the seasonal etchings. I had stitched spring and summer and I'm doing them individually. And my Whipco was to do autumn and winter. And not only did I start them, I finished them and I fully finished them. All right. So here is, I know, so cute. My autumn owls. I could not stop thinking when I was stitching these that these owls reminded me of us. But unfortunately, I think of this one as Anna and that one as me. But we're we'd have to like sit on the opposite side, so we may have to make that change. And I finished them as a little flat, which I'm really loving. On the back will actually be that's just my lacing. I'm going to use this brown fabric, which I think really looks nice with the brown that's in all of them. So nice and neutral, right? And then I'm gonna take whatever the accent color, in this case, the orange floss, and do a little cording around it. So you have board there, no puffy anything? No, I have one layer of matte board and one layer of batting. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. And I really actually like finishing on matte board almost more than the um, foam core. I think maybe for bigger pieces, foam core, but on bigger pieces, I might continue with trying the matte board. I'm waiting because I ordered a couple of uh, some little magnets because I want to put between the fabric and the mat board for the back a magnet or two because I also want to have the option of like sticking these on metal things. Mm -hmm. All right, can you hold that one? Yeah. All right, and then the winter is this beautiful cardinal. So here's the winter. Again, I have just these little stands. These stands are sold on Etsy and it's Coon stained glass. These are, and this is under their wood stand. So they're mainly selling stained glass things, but they sell these little stands, I think intended to hold your stained mm. glass. And this, um, you can see this one is a little higher. So I kind of like the change of scale. I like that a lot. And I, right now I only have four, but I'm gonna definitely order some more because these to me are so versatile. You can prop them around, move them, change them. All right, so those are those two. And then I went ahead and also finished, or fully finished, my spring and my summer. If you'll notice, I added my margin is bigger at the bottom. I did that so when it sits in the wooden stand, it, it, you won't lose any of the design. And then I also know whenever you frame things in frames, often the bottom margin is just appealing to have it larger. So I'm like, that's okay. Even if it's not in one of those boards, I think that margin is fine. So let's maybe we'll hold up all four. Because I, I was even thinking you could do some, put them all together, change them around. Do you still have the palette of threads I do. separated? Will you I do. keep them separated? I do. This is such a beautiful palette. I'm going to, I thought it was a palette to, to, worth keeping. Yeah. Um, I watched Vanna Pfeiffer's tutorial on doing cording. Um, and then one thing I realized, 
I had, I actually ordered a new skein of each of the accent colors. Like for example, for the fish, I'm doing the blue as the accent because I realized if you cut, cut all of your floss, you can't use it for cording because cording needs the long. So in the future, if I think I'm gonna use cording, I might only like cut part of my floss and leave others in the long strands in mm -hmm. the future. That might just be a good habit to get into. Mm -hmm. All right, so, just, so happy with that. And then I was just in a, in a groove, so, oh, I should give a few details. The All of these are stitched on Seraphim Fabric Chai, 36 count, I love Seraphim. I kept, when I went back to stitch on Seraphim again, I stitched a lot on Seraphim in the beginning and mm. I haven't recently, her linen's really nice and call for over dyes. All right, then I also have my, I did one of the summer salt boxes by Plum Street Samplers. This is the one I finished. I went ahead, same thing, I do these. I still have to put a little piece of wool on the back to cover up that hole, but same thing, I display these in the little holders like they're Polaroid. I see oh, the is. appeal of doing like all the seasons on one piece of fabric. And maybe mm -hmm. once we have lots of doodads, we mm -hmm. will be more inclined to do mm -hmm. that. But I just think these are so tiny and cute. Mm -hmm. I really like them. Yeah. Yeah. So this is stitched on 36 count prairie grass, also from Seraphim. And it was the called for classic color works over dyed cottons mm -hmm. for this. Oh, this is inspiring me. I really want to get the fall going. So now I have the two springs, one of the summers, and I, I want to keep going. Yeah, you're on your way. I'm also finding this style of finish is really fits like my style, almost more than having lots of pillows. I'm sure I'll, I'll still do pillows, but just as far as displaying around the house, this this is working really well for you me. You have some really nice ledges mm -hmm. and or just to prop it against books. stuff, or I have some like metal that I'm like, oh, these would be, to be great on the metal. Uh, also, when I was looking at all the fractor, the school teachers, Pennsylvania Dutch school teachers would sometimes paint a little fractor. They called it an award of merit that they would give to their students. And they're these tiny little pictures. So I almost think of these as like, like such nice little awards of merit. Like, wouldn't it be nice you're going to visit somebody and like it's a nice little gift to somebody or like you've you done. Excellent hostess. Yes. Anna, you are such a nice sister. Like, I'm not really going to give it to her. I'm just pretending. Anna, you're such a nice sister. I'm going to give this to you. You know what I mean? Like they're sort of small and Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll stop talking about these. Okay, just since like, you've so stitched these them. recently, uh, how many days did, did it take? Like, mm -hmm. what, kind of, what kind of... This one probably took me from start to finish, like maybe four. Okay. Four days. This one I think I did like in two, All which right. seemed it was unusual. And that's another thing. I stitched these probably within my first year of stitching. Yeah, I feel like it was a while ago. And I remember them taking me a really long time. Or, uh, yeah, a really long time, but much longer. And I think it just, I was just a slower stitching, and especially those inner details of the fish. I remember that was a little complicated. having to really like think and count. Mm -hmm. So that was also kind of fun going back to the same pattern and being like, like for this, this was like no brainer for me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Yeah, it's that feeling of, oh, we've improved. Okay, I'll stop talking about it. I just, I can't get enough of these. Really like those. Oh gosh, we have to show the stack too. I know, show the little stack. Really nice. All right, and then I have one more finished, fully finished object, and this was also my Whipco. This was my Whipco number 19, which was make an unexpected gift for somebody. So this is a beanie. Oops, the cup's coming up. I still need to block it and mail it to really check Look off my Whipco. Look at the of that, it's gorgeous. This is gonna be a special thank you, Beanie. I'll tell you who it's for once I've sent it to that person. The pattern I used is the Chic Knits, C-H-I-C. This is her basic chic ribbed beanie. She's a wonderful designer. I've made this beanie probably about six times. And the yarn I used is a beautiful indigo dyed yarn from a verb for keeping warm and it's called their Annapurna. And it's a combination of, what is it? Merino wool and some cashmere. And it's all naturally dyed. This one was dyed August 2nd of this year. That's a gorgeous color. So I have enough left over. I might make myself like a very small pair of fingerless gloves or something with this, because it's mm. so, so nice. I also wanted to share just as far as making. 
This is a little, what would you call these bags? Will you tie them? There's a name. Bento for, bag? Maybe a bento bag. Because you can put your bento box mm -hmm. in it. And my daughter-in-law, one of my daughters-in-law, Catherine, you met her in one of the videos over the summer. She made two of these for me when she was learning to sew. I think it was one of her first sewing projects. I think she was visiting Joan, our sister Joan, mm -hmm. and Joan taught her how to use a sewing machine. So she made this for me and she knit, she put my initials on there too. So my, my middle name is Quill from our grandmother. So I love Carol and Quill. So I'm often CQ. Isn't that nice? Yeah. That's sweet. Okay. Yeah. That's my she's, house. My, yeah. She's a good one. She's a good one. <laughs> my son. Yeah. I'm scored. <laughs> All right. All right. Where are we? Okay. Whips. Okay. I have a new start. This was something I was thinking of starting for my birthday last month. Never did. And it called to me again. It called to me in a big mm. way. And that is this chart inspired by nature. Mm. Please notice there are three parts. There's the sampler. There's the bird. And there's the pin cushion. And I am officially changing my bap. <gasps> my big awesome project. Good. And I want to stitch all three components. Oh, so that's your bath is to do all three. Mm -hmm. Anna, I now, love it. I started Mary Bar and I'm mm -hmm. still attached to that pattern. I needed to make some color changes and I'm realizing the reason I'm changing, for one thing, I'm having a ball with this, but Mary, I need to go back up to the store and like, I was thinking of just making some of the shades darker and I'm realizing for it to be a satisfying stitch for me, I need to rethink the colors in sort of a bigger, more thorough mm -hmm. way. So I've just stopped that for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm st I still, I want to stitch it one day, mm -hmm. but right now, this is That's really me. smart. Here's the color palette. I'm missing cinnamon, which is a reddish brown. That's coming, I finally found it. Kitten Stitcher had it. Uh, oh, I mean, I wish, I wish you all could see the details as closely. There's so much going on in this, Anna. This is going to be incredible. This would be a great pattern, too, if you wanted to just pick a few smalls off of that, like even that top border. Definitely. Okay. Can I, I am see? not going to stitch the words at the top. Anna! I know. I mean, <gasps> this is what I have so far. And on this sampler, I love this red coming down. On the sampler, there are a few patches. And so I started the grasshopper patch too, which will go down either pinned on or stitched on. So this is the grasshopper. He has a cinnamon head, so he have to <laughs> his head is gonna have to wait. Wow. I, so that's gonna be right there. Yeah, I'm absolutely loving this. And I decided I wanted to start at stitching over the join to strengthen where how I, stitch the fabric. Is that like together. a big cross stitch or what's stitched over the joint? It is. It's a, like a double cross stitch. And okay. And same thing. Were you following the threads on both? Did you get the threads lined up? I'm not sure. There are a few places where I've hit a problem. So I either captured one too many or one too few threads, which I'll talk more about this in a bit, or I, as I was go one leg in the green and one leg in the off white, Maybe I did some miscounting there. Mm -hmm. On this okay, red this... border, I'm stitching through my seam. Yeah, how's that? Fine, totally fine. And then on the other pieces, I'm just sort of tucking them under ah, the seam. Yeah. So this, it's the red side borders. The Besides those big X's that went across, it's only that red border that's gonna go over your seam. That's and, right. And so yet I'm... you made it over your seam? Yeah. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. I, I This was hurting my brain. I ran into a trouble spot right in here, right in here. And the way I solved it was to just jog one thing over one linen thread. So like a half of a stitch. And I think in the long run, You'd we're know. never gonna know. No. And the stuff that's below and above the seam, again, like if it's a little, if I have to make some modifications there, I think it'll be fine. And I, okay, so in our We're Curious, she's gonna talk more about how she put this linen together. But wow, 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 wow. I, I really like collage in general. And so the idea of making this grasshopper and that mothy butterfly mm -hmm. thing and sewing them on, it's just, and I love the bird and I, lo I love all three. Oh yeah. The bird is very Kathy Barrick like to me. It is. It's, it's a little bit hard to see in, here, let me just see if I can put it up closer. Oh my gosh, Anna. 
looking at this, like even this tree with all the things, like there's some mushrooms under it, it's like little animals. Mm -hmm. So cool. This um, it's bringing out my nature girl. I have a nature girl in me. Quaint rose needle art. Yeah. This is a new pattern too, isn't it? Do you, yes. Okay. Newish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I think it came out. I don't think it came out in the March mm -hmm. round of patterns. It came out in the more fall. like more, yeah. So it's, nice. it's completely captured me and I can't wait to get back to it. This, yeah, this, that's a, are you, oh, so you might not put the words. I'm not going to put the are words. Are you going to put though those motifs? Right now, no, right now, no. Right now, this okay. is the top. Okay. The, the top of the red. I, but you could go up if you wanted. Absolutely. I have plenty of linen. I'm almost wondering if instead of the words, because I think that's really, those are really nice above there is even like taking one of these or some other band just saying across where the words are, maybe some alternative band sampler or band design. Yeah. This fabric is seaweed and this fabric is salt bush by Fox and Rabbit. I need to find a little bit more salt bush if I to do the bird or do something, maybe something in between these two. Mm. This has a little mm -hmm. bit of a greenish hue mm -hmm. or pick up something else. Mm. And I'm so glad you changed. And it's so, I think, important, like, even if you feel like, okay, this is my BAP or whatever for a sale. I, I'm, I was so in. I was all in. Yeah. If it's, like, an, it's not working for yeah, me. Yeah. If it's not working. And I think you're right. You may need to go up and really just rethink all your colors on that. Like, almost do your own. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's I'll so enjoy cool. watching the other people who are working on Mary Bar for mm -hmm. a while. Wow. Um, yeah. All right, Carolyn, what, okay. what is your first Yep. With? So my first one is Kathy Barrick, White Winter Moth. And here's my progress from last episode. And I've done just a little bit more, but it keeps developing and growing. I always like having a before and after photo because I'm I actually like, oh, that's what I did. You kind of forget. I saw, see the moth coming in. This pedestal right here is going to have a little bird on it, but I still need to decide what color that's going to be. And this time I want to talk a little bit about this linen. The linen is Red Cedar by Cedar River Linens and Design, uh, Jody from Seattle. And I don't know if you can capture it, but this has so much depth of color. It has almost like a little red, a little orange, and again, it's maybe one of those things that you can't see on screen, but it is beautiful to stitch in. And I love the hand. If you haven't tried any of her linen, I highly recommend trying it. I, I'm using my own color conversion. That was three shades of the Gothic red palette in MPI and the white white and really happy. So yeah, when I talked, nice. when I talked at the beginning about being really burned out of my parent, parent, not burned out, it's not the right word. Uh, tired, 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 really tired. tired after my parent-teacher conferences. <laughs> Here's this tiny little motif right here. And there'll be another color inside. I had two of those. Those are the ones I just could not, I could not do. After I did two nights, uh, you know, that's it. I can't stitch the knife. <laughs> just sort of sad. So just continuing to really enjoy this one. Yeah, the color combo is intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. All right, how about you? All right, my next whip is the Wee Santa from last year, mm. 2022, heart in hand. Um, here's, the, here's the Wee The picture. Wee pattern and the Wee picture. Yeah, it has, oh, I can't. Make sure you kind of see like little beads. And here's you the, don't even need to stitch it. I'm using the called for over dies. There's a lot of pink in there. And here's where I was last time. And here's where I am now. Oh, Anna. And I am doing this on 36 count hog bristle by Fox and Rabbit. I guess I'm using a lot of Fox and Rabbit right now. And it's my little fun side of seasonal. <laughs> I have 
I, I know I need I need to start start that little arc of goodness above him because I find that kind of work a little fiddly. Mm. I need to get going on that. I did the trees and I brought his body down a little bit. More. Can I make a recommendation of something mm -hmm. I've tried? Yeah. If you do the green arc first, then you can pick one color and I will then like kind of carry it under some of the green if I can. Mm. And then like I'll do, so, you know, if I have to go, it depends how far I have to carry, like the pink, maybe not, but maybe those greens, you might be able to pop up there. Okay. So I, so I try as much as I can. I'll do to, like the actual branch and then. Yeah. To minimize start and stop. Oh, and the have you done the pres The presents are going to be fun. Yeah. Now I've heard people talk about pooling with over dyes, and mm -hmm. it's never. I know what people mean like, like a little striping or something. Mm -hmm. It's never bothered me before, but it did happen in this part of Santa's body. There's sort of a dark stripe here, and underneath it was another dark stripe, and it really was looking striped. So I'm like, I'm going to play with this. So this bottom section of Santa. I did like four stitches, five stitches, mm -hmm. down over seven stitches. So it's more of just a mishmash. Do you, are you doing full crosses as you go or are you going out and back? So half um, cross and half cross. I usually go out and back, mm -hmm. but I did full crosses down here. Anyway, mm -hmm. I think it really looks a lot different and I'm gonna try that again in that this section. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. This is really, really, Really cute. So Jody at Jody Stitching Adventure and Robin at Robin Knits are also st stitching. In fact, Robin is also stitching Mary Barr. So oh, oh, so fun watching her progress. She's she's darkened a few of the color of the threads of her Mary Barr. Oh, she did. Okay, but it's fun to have a few uh, fellow stitchers who are working on the same pattern. And I bought this. I like pink in holiday designs, and I bought this fabric last year. So I'm thinking I might incorporate this pattern, this fabric. Do you have a thought about how you want to finish it? I might, I, it either a little pillow or a little flat foldy kind mm -hmm. of thing. So the colors are not exactly the same, but I'm leaning towards using that fabric. Mm -hmm. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. I love when there's a little group of people that like, you can follow the hashtag, but sometimes it's fun if you know the people or have had some already some communication with the people stitching the same thing. But I wish in Instagram there was a way to make a little group, you know, because all you can do is hashtag, like if you, for Jody and Robin and you, since you're all working, wouldn't, wouldn't it be neat if there was just a place where you could quickly go and check everybody's progress that or would be. send a message to, you know, the other two or something. I don't know. Thinking about that. So for now we just, ta we'll ta we can tag each other. Yeah, I guess, I mean, all oh, right. Post. Okay. That, that's maybe a good thing is to tag each other. But then you, you, the thing about your, your idea of what you wish we had, then we could see everybody's together. When we tag each other, it's just a little bit like, Hey, here's where I am. Yeah. Um, this also, Anna comes, okay. has, Watch the oh, sure. sorry. This came with beads. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where do, are you going to use the beads and where do they go? Anytime there's a number. Yeah. Like, I think these are supposed to be two little snowflakes on Santa's. Yeah. And then there's some beads up here. Boop, boop. Oh, okay. I'm definitely trying the beads. Yeah. That'll be my first time. I did some beads from one of the Katie Strachan kits, and she had some really good words of wisdom. Of, of course, Katie, you're still my mentor. Like, <laughs> big, time. big time. So when you get to that, I can also share some of the things I learned from Thank Katie. You. From Katie. Okay. Next up is my bat, a peacock. Peacock. A peacock, a unicorn, a badger. And this is by a scarlet letter. And I continue just to love this piece. Practically every comment from the last video is like, oh my gosh, Carolyn. I, so, I love it so piece. much. I'm using the call for uh, uh, Swadage from Avera Swa Silks. Oh my gosh, just, I mean, come on. I know. And here's my progress. Oh, here's where I was before. I didn't have quite as much progress because before I was stitching monogamously on it. And that, so here I am. And last time I was missing a green that has since come in and it's the inside of mm. the leaves and the strawberries. So now that section is completely filled in. And Becky from yeah, Becky's House of Sewing, I'm just having so much fun with her because she's doing it. She's stitching it from left to right across the top and I'm stitching it down the right side. So I've just been so, she posts a lot of progress. So definitely 
Check her out both on Instagram and on YouTube. And I, I think it was just last night, I, I just DM'd her and I said, oh, cause she's coming across. Let me make sure I'm pointing the correct way. She's coming across and she's almost getting over to the squirrel. So I'm like, let me know when you start the squirrel and I'll start the squirrel too at the same time. So I had already done some of the squirrel's tail and then she almost DM'd right back. I'm just starting the squirrel now. So I, I then, How fun. I switched, I was working down here. I'm like, okay, I'm coming up to the squirrel and I've just started outlining that. I was going to say you're meeting in the middle, but the squirrel's not. Oh yeah. Middle. She, she, she is, done a lot, Becky. she has just been going to town on this, but I thought it might be fun along the way of, if we're ever in the same place to sort of that idea of stitching together and like having that, that shared experience. Okay. We're both doing the squirrel right now. So anything else I want to say that just still loving everything about this piece. Yesterday, I was at some point, I was a little bit tired, so I'm like, I'm just going to do fill-in for yeah, a while. I mean, exactly. just whatever you're in the mood for. You're going to totally do this. I can just feel it. Uh, yeah, I think I will, too. I, I love checking the hashtags, and a few people have chosen to do it on green linen, and that way they're not filling it in, and mm -hmm. those are looking beautiful. Like, at first, I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to like that, but they're spectacular. They're mm -hmm. beautiful, too. And then... Ooh, I'm pretty sure it's Knitter of Norway. Do you, that sounds right? familiar. Yeah. Um, I'll put her Instagram handle on here. She finished it maybe end of August, beginning of September. So if you want to see a finished one that's spectacular, I mean, her stitching is unbelievable. So It's so inspiring to see it. a finish of like, yes, it is possible. People are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So a peacock, a unicorn, a badger. Fantastic. My next whip is one of my October Whip Co. pulls, and it is <laughs> I just feel traumatic <laughs> doing a zipper. <laughs> uh, M Bell 1856 from Modern Folk Embroidery. And here we go. I'm just doing this half. And here's where I was last time. Anna, you made great I, progress. I, I got on a roll on this and I came across. Sorry. I know across, we're, we're opposite on down. the screen. But you think, I mean, we're, I'm sort of used to that from teaching, but yeah. it's still, looks in my head. Finished this, did this. I think I still did a little bit more. I think you were just starting in on half of the. Oh, uh, yeah, I finished right? that rose right. in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I just. I just had a few nights in a row of like, I just felt like it and everything was making sense in my head. Yeah. And I was just boom, 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 boom. Was this from, everything from grow. last week when you had, when you put in more, uh, more strands? <laughs> yes, it was. Nice. So it's just, um, I find it a meditative stitch and I'm, and I really, really like mm -hmm. it. Even just the calm of one color. And it made me think because we both started ours last November for black sampler November. That's right. I'm wondering if that's happening again this year. Are you going to do anything for it? I haven't thought of anything about it. I guess maybe if you haven't finished that, yeah, you can maybe keep going. I focus on this. And this was on this is on cloister cream, mm -hmm. and I'm using Gloriana. It's called India Ink. The person at the Needlepoint store told me there's blue in it. I can't see the blue in it. Can you? Or can anyone out there? You know, I think maybe the only way you would see it is the fact that it does read like a cool black. Like some blacks yeah. you can see like a little okay. green. So, but it does feel like a cool black, doesn't it? That helps me. Yes. I wouldn't necessarily say it, it had blue undertones. Like I wouldn't have been able to pick out that color. Mm -hmm. By the way, our, our local needlepoint store carries some cross-stitch thread for needlepointing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that at first that that could be a possible place mm -hmm. to find a thread if you're really searching for something. Do you remember what brands she she had? Like she, she had... has some overdyed cottons. Oh, she does have mm -hmm. some overdyed cottons. And she cottons. carries um, Felswa. Oh, she has quite a bit of things that you'd be interested in. All right, Carolyn, you okay. are next. Oh, some knitting. Oh, so, yeah, I have some knitting. I have a niece. Um, she's on my husband's side, and she's currently she's just an awesome individual. And she's so full of life and she is right now in law school and just kicking it. And she loves the Beatles. So there is a yarn dyer. It's called Must Stash Yarns. 
And she does a lot of self-striping yarns with different fun themes. And this was a Sergeant Pepper's colorway. And I get the email and, and as soon as I saw Sergeant Pepper's, I'm like, I gotta make this for Annabelle. So here, and, and she comes and she's, it's already done in two skeins. I had to make them into the cake. So if you wanna make them exactly the same, you can make them exactly the same. Hmm. And I'm knitting a toe up sock, which means you start with the toe and I'm coming down right now and I'm working on the heel. Let me just back up a little bit. Is that a common thing to get two skeins so that your socks can match or is that something special about this? That's particular? Uh, some sock yarn dyers do that. So I'd say she's not the only one, but the, it's, she is unusual that she does it all the time. Okay. And so you can just see the fun striping that happens for free. And a heel is sort of, if you think about a sock, it's really interesting. You have your foot and your ankle. So you have to think in knitting, how can you turn a right angle? And there are all kinds of variations to do it. So the next time you see this, I'm, I'm in the process right now of starting that, of doing the right angle. And I'll show you next time I show how I turned, it's called turning the heel. Are you adding stitches? Is that one of the steps? Yeah, you start. So you first, I'm making the gusset right now, and then I'm going to do short rows to then take that and form it up. Cool. Yeah, lots of different ways to do it. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a happy project. It is a happy project, and it's a good no-brainer because you're just like knitting in the round. All right. Well, let's move on to our plans. Alrighty. When I thought when I think about my plans, my first thing is. Here we are, October 22nd. What will Whipco bring? Yeah. So what will, we have four things left on our we board. Four thing, what are your, do you know what your four things left are? I might be able to recall them all. One of them is the Kathy Barrick deer that and oh, nature sang. Uh -huh. One of them is, what's the one you made for B? Like, is it Love and Joy or something like that? Over, over Brook, um, Love and Joy. Mm -hmm. It was the yeah. Heartstring Samplery. So that's on there. So I should, oh, I should right. probably bring that pattern home with yeah. me today. Um, oh, it's, a, I have an old Brenda Gervais one that I just, I'm not sure I'm going to finish it. So I want to pull it out and put some stitches in and decide if I'm going to finish or not. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, if I think of my fourth one. Yeah. Oh, it's, I think it's Strawberry House. I think I've worked on Strawberry House, oh, that's but right. I haven't pulled it you, yet. I think you did mention that. Okay. What are your four? My four, um, is BH 1820, which I actually finished back in May. Oh, yeah. So that's, 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 that, that's going to be a freebie when that's done. Then I have, oh, seasonal stitching, so which would be great. Any, uh, it has to be stitching in the current season. So now it's, it would be probably Thanksgiving or something fall if I get that. I'm working um, on the design and doing a, a my our mother's 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 lineage sampler so oh. i'm really excited for that one and the other one was um fractor i'm going to take a fractor drawing or picture and bring it into max stitch and see if i can create a chart for okay. it and stitch that so, so you got some deep be, thinking i have options. some interesting experimenting um to do and it was fun like looking at the board i've i have not completed three of them but besides that completed everything Anna and i have our little jar it's funding our New Year's Day retreat. What we do is when, when we do finish one of our whip go, we put goals, a little something in there. A little something, something in there. Yeah. And you know what? A little, little something along the way mm -hmm. is adding up. Um, I'm also starting to think about uh, whip go for next year. I'm going to completely do it again. It's really fun to think about. And think about the, and think about the board. I've got a little list going. Mm -hmm. So um, in addition to whatever comes up for whip go, whip go I want to... Well, will, will I be starting the Kathy Barrick North Pole? I'm pointing over here because yeah. Carol, the one that the long Santa that Carolyn mm -hmm. showed, showed. And while I wait, I thought, since I'm one of the founding members of the Kathy Barrick Fan Club, yeah. <laughs> always have to just wait. We start. We, we really have some ideas. We want to make some pins or something like that. So I don't know. It's just so it's just so silly and fun to talk about. <laughs> I adore her designs. It kind of reminds me, you remember like back in like elementary school or whatever, you were like the such and such fan club or the... Yeah. I did run for a student class president and mm -hmm. my slogan was Anna's the best banana out of the bunch. Mm -hmm. I remember making posters with you. Yeah. We had we had posters all over the house. I thought it was something more like Anna's the banana that stands out from the bunch. But you probably know because it was your slogan. Well, that probably... I like that better because <laughs> anything that's like best or favorite, I don't really care for. Anyway, what... I, I have this from last year, the Kathy Barrick, a Christmas pin oh, yeah. pillow. And 
I have mm. the threads for it. So I got to take oh, home some Oh, yeah. Because wouldn't that be fun? That looks like a, definitely a seasonal snack. A mm. side, no, sorry, a side, a side of seasonal. Of seasonal. So Cute. that popped in my head just because we've been thinking about yeah, do you, because Do you have a Kathy Bear going right now? I have several. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I have, an, I have an in nature soon. Oh, okay. And then I have uh, Baby C's. Oh, that's right. Garden I, was, I was about to say, and... out of the fan club, you. No. Yeah. You you can be in the fan club even if you're not stitching Kathy Bear. I don't think you get... What? <laughs> oh, stop. You are, anybody you, anybody isn't included in the fan club yes, anytime. You, yes. Well, you have to like Kathy Barrick's. Oh, yeah. Have, it's probably beneficial if you like Kathy Barrick's designs to be in the fan club. Mm -hmm. but you self-select. Okay. Right, your plans. All your right. My plans. A Whipco. So I finished both my October calls. Well, as soon as I block and mail that hat. Okay. I keep my whips in a closet. and I keep them on like a pants hanger. And the other day, the room I store my stuff is also I have my desk. I have to do schoolwork or whatever. And from the closet, I was hearing, let me out. Please stitch me. It was my Gordon, Reverend Gordon squash bottom. So he's like, it's time to get me out. I stitched on him. He's maybe. advocating for he himself. He's advocating, self-advocating. He was in, I think I had him on Whipco. And I said, I'm going to put you away till fall and stitch you. But I think it's time. It was my birthday. My birthday is in right around Thanksgiving. And he was my start last year. And I really want to have him done by this year. But I, when I pulled him out and I got him out of the closet just, oh, to, yeah. just to keep him quiet, I'm like, well, I don't have that much more to do. So that's my plan. I think I'm going to get going on Rev. And then I had so much fun with these little doodahs. I wanted to do a, a fall small. So I'm either going to do the autumn seasons of the heart. I would have sworn you'd already done that one. It's so funny. I know. And, or my salt box. Yeah, I have the threads for this. I'm we're gonna I'm gonna pick out a linen before Anna leaves to get her opinion. So I'll probably start one of those as well. So those are my plants. Oh, and as soon as Olivia, if she's able to swing it and do the floss packs for North Pole, ordering those. Yeah, and I think I would. Uh, anyway, whoever let us sees let it us, first. Let's just get a couple. I'll, I'll just buy two. Whoever sees it first, buy two. Well, but any, make I sure you you tell the other person so we don't end up with four. Right. Um. Also, again, let us know if you are going to be stitching those and maybe we can even pick like a, a start date or something and just it would be a really it would fun, be fun one. one to have some kibitzing back and forth as we're as we're stitching or some chit chatting about it. OK, those are my plans. All right. So, Anna, this is we're curious. She's going to tell us a little bit about her sewing linen. Right, right. When we were talking in the last video about one of the things that when we were talking about fully finishing things, we were saying it uses a different kind of brain power and sometimes we feel like we need the space of time or maybe we need to start chunking and doing things here and there. I had a day off school in the past couple of weeks and I thought, I'm just learning how to sew two pieces of linen mm. together. So this pattern actually came with a recommendation for um, a, to, of a floss tube, a, a person who taught me how to mm -hmm. stitch two pieces of linen, obviously before you start sewing. Mm -hmm. I always imagined doing it after mm -hmm. the, the stitching was done. Um, and I thought it was a great tutorial. And the, what you do is you uh, go about a half inch down on each piece of fabric and you go over four threads in one fabric and then through to the next fabric, over four threads on that fabric, through to the next fabric. You kind of make this back and forth. And here's a picture of halfway down. Okay. Then you come back and you fill in the empty spaces. So basically you're constantly counting, you're staying in line. And you're, you have, and you're counting up, they're and double you're combining. Together. Okay, and they're like, is it like right sides together? Oh yeah, that's good to mm -hmm. hold that up. And so, over four threads and then, oh now it's covered. And then I would go over four threads. And are you and going over four switching threads. it front to back? Yes. Right? And so, and as you go into the second layer, you have to make sure you're coming out four threads yes. over. And I found this dark linen a little bit hard to see. I actually got my magnifier out. I I found it hard to do. Yeah. I think for the most part, it's lining. Like I said earlier, it's lining up beautifully. And I ended up actually using my sewing machine and actually doing a sewing machine stitch outside of the area that I'm going to be stitching because I also found it hard to get a big enough knot that was strong enough that wouldn't pull through the linen to make everything. I don't know, maybe I do tend to do things a little too tightly, mm -hmm. but I didn't see any ripples and I just finger pressed it open. So when I was finished and I finger pressed, it's like, oh, 
Yeah, I, I was very satisfied with the results of the, co the combining. Yeah, if you feel like you're only a thread off here and there, that's that's incredible. Next time, I think what I will do is do maybe a basting thread with, I think going through both layers and thinking about both situations at the same time, I just found it, I, found, I did find it hard. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I, I will do a basting thread. Maybe I'm gonna go down eight threads or something. Maybe a 10 threads down. Maybe mm -hmm. just one at a time, I'll go back and forth, four, four threads, four threads, four threads, so that I'll, then I can line up those holes a little bit. I actually, easily. I bet that would because, be a big help. Yeah, because I think that will be very relaxing to me, uh -huh. and then I'll have like a better guide. Mm -hmm. So, would you recommend the tutorial that you watched? Absolutely. Okay. I thought the tutorial was great. It was by um, Blue Bonnets and Whiskey. Blue Bonnets and, and it's okay. called something like sewing two pieces of linen together. It'll come up for mm -hmm. you if you search it. And but I certainly want to try doing some stitching and then combine sewing the fabrics together after. I want to be able to compare those two mm -hmm. processes and that might go on my whip go board. So yeah, because Anna, we've toyed with maybe doing the berry bowl where mm -hmm. you um, sew half and half and then you, sorry, stitch half and half and give it to each other. I wonder if that is stitched after or if it's done before. I feel like I've heard reference to after. After, okay, yeah. I also wondered if it was important to have the same manufacturer of linen. And so I picked two fox and rabbit. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if you're going to do something like count threads like this, it was very precise. I, I think it'd be fine. Not. Yeah. I think it would work out. You'd probably want to either use both linens have been dyed or both linens have not been dyed like as Weigart because the dyeing process, I'm sure, shrinks it up a little bit. So to get them, you yeah, don't want it to pucker. So it might not be as much um, who was the dyer, but was it dyed yeah. over, or over dyed. Yeah, so essentially right sides together, about a half inch down or so. Four threads, four threads, four threads, four threads. Four threads well, four I threads. feel like you were so successful because you were not gapping, you're lining up. I mean, you really, you really need. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I just had that frustration with the red stitching that yes, of I was course. describing. Um, but other than that, I do feel like I like the way it's laying. And do you see how this is a little bit left compared to that? These ones that look like oh, tees. Yeah, yes, I do. Anna just pointed out where she shifted. Yes, I can see that. Mm -hmm. But if you had it told me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have seen and it. And strange, the reason it was so hard for my brain is these things will not shift. It's, it was just this one little part, which makes me think, I think I did three or five strands somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, really neat. So that was a really fun exploration. And as I said, I really like collage. And so this idea of sewing two different linens together, whether it's a subtle difference or a big difference, yeah. I know I will. there's more of that in my future. Yeah, and, and particularly that she also uses the technique of kind of making a patch and putting that on. That will be interesting to see. I'll be curious how you finish your edges. Like, do, is it like an applique on top or how she handles that? You just do a back stitch all the way around because the back stitch will keep it from fraying. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is back stitch with sewing thread and then sew the patch on with embroidery floss over the exact yes. same, the exact same okay. spots. To Cannot come. wait to sew on the um, patch. Gigi of the Art, Artsy Housewife has a couple of charts that she has that uses, I think, three colors of linen. They're some of the ones, it's her series where she has a word, I know what, I know I have the one that I think that says grace. I think one says peace, I forget who they are, but I think that used a center and then a strip down this side and a strip along the bottom. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for charts that utilize that. Yeah, actually that would be great if anybody knows. So that one's mm. logged in my brain, but if anybody knows any others, or I can just make it up myself, right? You could always make a chart and start collaging it together. Yeah, or just like, yeah, just three pieces of linen and then just stitch all stitch something mm -hmm. over it like a one color thing or even thinking about some of the simple marking samplers what if you had that different, would be different linens like even some horizontal and maybe a vertical band and then the marking sampler was on top mm -hmm. great oh my goodness oh whip go pour Ooh, next year brain is swirling um, and it, it might be kind of fun like let's say we wanted to experiment with collaging with fabric and that was on a whip it might be fun for us to put it on the same number so when it got called we would be working on it at the same time like there might be inching for a couple of our whip goes next year 
to coordinate. I, I like that a lot because I, th I think I said in the last video too, I keep referring to it in the last video, I'm sort of missing having a parallel I know, stitch. I know, when we, were, when we were more beginners, we were we didn't know as many patterns. Yeah. Well, we'll do the North Pole for sure. Okay, and that'll take us a while, so. It looks like a big stitch. Okay, shared supplies. Shared supplies, I have three older patterns. I heard Olivia B mention some, oh, she showed a finish and the designer, it was um, a company called The Work Basket. Mm. And I don't think they make patterns anymore. And I did a little online search and the pictures were very hard to see and they're actually hard to see on these two. Ooh. But I like the aesthetic a lot. The first one I picked was Deer Tree. And I'll come in. Is there any way to show the crepe Quaker reindeer on the back too? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do that. She has a bonus. Because I really that like is that. a funky they reindeer. Like, they were that. like, we, we decided we were gonna, there's a little story about it. We decided we had to include this reindeer too. I mean, I love that. Does it appeal to you? Oh, very much so. Yeah. I think it's that change of scale, something a little bit off that my eye likes. Mm -hmm. The next one, do you say primer or primer? Primer? Prim, prim. I might say primer. Primer. It's it's gonna be really hard to see. It's just a classic little sampler, sampler snack. What are the, will you look for the um, dimensions? No, the um, date of when these were made. These, these patterns, oh, this is 2014. These patterns look like they've been around at the store for a while. The third one I picked is called the Aqua Sampler. And I can't wait to see what that blue thread is in person. Again, all three of these are from the work basket. Look at that. Box. Oh, nice. This one, I can't open it because it's kind of the packaging uh, tied, tied at the top with everything inside. So I wonder if it's gonna be a big pattern. Oh my goodness, I might have to decide my own colors because this is made with Krynic milk paints. I've never heard of that. Have you ever heard of that? Krynic milk paints? One paint. strand of Krynic. I've heard of Krynic for the, for. This is, that the date on that is 2004. Oh my gosh, the chart is so tiny. Mm -hmm. I mean, the symbols on the chart. Mm -hmm. I wish I could show you. You probably anyway, could show I just, I had so much fun. What can I find online by the work basket? The pictures again were like hard to see because the pictures on the pattern themselves are hard to see. And I was like, I'm just gonna order some. That was fun. I'm realizing we've gotten darker and darker as we've gone through the afternoon. I'm hoping our colors are still showing up. Okay. Um, I ordered as soon as I saw, you know, this. I went right to Hillside Rookery and ordered this along with a few more patterns. And I, I just love Olivia B's, like Hillside Rookeries. She stamps, you get the bird. It's like hard, like I almost want to cut out her little details on this and she will write you a little card. And then um, I just love her logo. It's tools and treats for needle workers. So I love that combination of tools and treats mm -hmm. on Etsy and Instagram. So here are the other patterns I got. I'm laughing at the second one because I've almost ordered that so many okay. times. Um, this is the Artsy Housewife. Anna got this last time from Evertote with the threads. And I want to stitch it so badly. I think we might be stitching it concurrently. So I got the chart also. Also, sometimes like I really like this designer a lot. And I, like also when I want to support a designer, particularly somebody I know she's getting really getting her business going. It's probably maybe sure. just been a year or a year and a half. You can feel the momentum. You feel the momentum and I'm like, okay, I definitely, you know, I don't mind if we buy the same chart twice. Yeah, that has really pretty autumn colors. Yeah, I think we're starting that are you, soon. Are you gonna share the floss with me? Yeah, I think, think it's gonna be enough. Yes, I do. All right, this next one, um, Hillside Rookery on their Instagram feed, Olivia posted, somebody got this kitted with the MPIs and the colors are spectacular, but it's it's Peace on Earth by Lottie Da. And the sentiment, I really like a lot. The sentiment, the, and this is one time where I put the words on this. It says, mm -hmm. let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. I think that's so important no matter how we want to change things or improve things, let's make sure we're doing it first ourselves. That's my my way of thinking about it okay this next one olivia when we had our meetup she's working on this 
couldn't resist it. I couldn't resist it. It's huge. It's the Houses of Hawkworn Hollow. I've never done a Hawkworn Hollow. And I I don't think I would put the different words in here. I would put I replace those with initials or little motifs and I'd do something different down here. But hers was so spectacular. It really, it really is. And the thing like here's a time where each little block is almost its own finish. So. And you, you, ha you're a person who has the stamina to finish these kinds of things. I'm yeah. more, I'm more of a snappy person. But then it was also making me think, you know, what I want to do the houses of Hawkman Hollow, but oh. in my little do three of them or something. Same. They must be approximately the same sizes. I have to go back and look at the chart. Mm -hmm. Hold up the MPI list on that one. Oh, it's two columned. I think Olivia says what she's doing is as she goes to each block, she's she's getting the thread. I think it's a great for idea. that block, and then you know that way it's a little bit you don't get them all at once. So thinking about birthday starts, <laughs> does everybody else do this when you have a special like birthday start and you have like all these things you think you're going to start? It, it might be this. I don't know if this one's too big. I don't know if I first. I don't. Know. But I just wanted to go ahead and get that. And I do want to. I'm excited for you. Yeah. That. I mean, this is one of, Lottie Da was one of the first designers that I noticed and learned about, and I really, really like her designs, Lori, Lori's designs. Um, and I, so I've been looking at that one for three years. And I think too, uh, also Olivia put the chart and then she also put the MPIs and seeing the colors in I person. Have, I must've missed that one. Mm -hmm. It's on Hillside Rickery. Mm-hmm. I know because Ann and I, we've talked about this before, since we share the Instagram, like if Anna sees it, I won't see it. So there are certain people, sometimes they're just like, oh, I haven't, you know, seen something from Hillside Rookery in a while. I'm going to go look at that. Yeah. Or, oh. Oh, yeah. Do you want to put that up? Or you can do it with the chart, too. I mean, it's just on Instagram. We hearted it. Look at that. Yeah. And... I was thinking it would be beautiful in a darker linen, but with those browns, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. very pretty. So again, I know we say this all the time, but Olivia, thank you so much. You have such a beautifully curated store. Of course I saw this because I left a comment. Peace on Earth has long been on my list. I'll probably tell you this a million times. You have a gift for curation. Yeah. That's what I wrote to Olivia that day. So it's funny. The colors didn't stick in my head. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you commented on it. Before. I commented on it. I'm like, oh, she did? She did? Okay, Anna. I might move this up on my plans. I wonder if I want this to be my next, like, sort of fall, because it has such good fall colors Just let it. me know. We'll, it's just, when, whenever you're ready to go, I want to start it together. That that would be my first choice. Okay. But I don't want to impose anything on you. What you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cutting a piece of linen in half. Let's keep, oh, okay, we're going. Let's, let's keep going. Oh, yeah. All right. My thumbs, my up. thumbs up. I just spent some time with baby C. So my three things are things I love about infants. I'm an infant person. I know not everybody is. I love the way they use their hands and feet. I, I, she's like, she thinks with her feet. She's doing like yoga poses with her little feet. And like her little hand, like maybe she's in the front pack and her little hand is like holding on to the shirt of her parent. I don't know. Puts me... Puts me right mm -hmm. over the moon. Mm -hmm. I love their vocalizations and their facial expressions. She can go from like stern, like I'm figuring this out, to like full on a wide mouth smile. And superficial, I know the outfits. I cannot wait to see what she has on. Every she time. had a cute little outfit on last night. Every time I see her, like they put a little beanie on her, and I like, oh my goodness, really enjoying watching this infant grow. Yeah, and thrive. She's cutie. Carolyn? All right. So the mine are all fall themed. Like I always say fall is my favorite season. But then I feel like I'm always stressed and harassed through the fall because it's such a busy time like at school too. It so is. what I did at the beginning, like end of September, beginning of October, I'm like, okay, enough of this, Carolyn. Like if it's your favorite season, why is it your favorite season? So mm -hmm. I sat down and like really listed the things of why fall is my favorite season. And then what I'm just trying to do is integrate them into my everyday, the, the things that I, I, I love about it. And I've had such a great fall. I mean, granted, 
Okay, whatever. It's really made a difference? It's really made just a difference. The... And I'll just share, I thought I would share three of the things that are on my, my list. Um, the one is ginkgo trees. We have these beautiful ginkgo trees here that they still haven't turned yellow or they're starting to turn. And so as I just, I have different walks I do and I can walk to work right now and everything. I found all the ginkgo trees that are on my typical paths and I've just been really observing those and so I can really watch them. Some of them are starting to turn just a little bit, but a lot of them will probably be over the next month. So that's been really fun. One of the other things I love about fall thumbs up is the crisp air. And we're just starting to get that, I'd say, in the last week. So I'm just like, even if I'm outside and again, I, I walk a lot, I'm just, I'll go like, oh, the air is so crisp. Like I'm trying to just like, <laughs> this sounds so ridiculous, but I'm just trying to like, if this is my favorite thing, let me like enjoy it. And then the other one is I love wearing sweaters. So I love knitting sweaters and I've just started to be able to wear sweaters to school and wear the more boy sweater. So again, just enjoying that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just Good. been fun. It's kind of fun. Like you always go, oh, this is my favorite. And then like to stop and think like really, why is it your favorite? And then just make sure you're trying to incorporate. And it's, it's, it was all little things. And then it was like my birthday's in fall. Like who doesn't love their birthday? I know. You know? Can't wait to celebrate you. Yeah. Okay. So until next time, happy crafting. Happy, happy crafting. Happy crafting. Stay, Stay curious. curious. Bye, everybody. Bye.